Yes. Practically all the time, it's my major way of viewing the world. When I was a kid and I'd read an exciting book, I'd imagine ways to play out that book. If I saw a cool movie, I was playing that movie all the next day with my friends. Initially, it was just let's pretend, but later on, I'd actually think up rules or systems to simulate it. Even today, when I read about an event in the news or fiction or film, I wonder what kind of game statistic could represent it. Almost everything is viewed through the lens of what if it was a game? Consider my upcoming game Hyperspace. If you follow my YouTube channel, you've seen some of my speculations about aliens. In What Would a Real Telepath Be Like? I show the chain of reasoning which led to the Broodmaster as at least one logical end state of a telepathic being. In another, I ponder what would a real time traveler be like, in which the process leads to the solipsistic ravening skiff. Yes, these are speculation, but also science, and I mention it so I spent a lot of time thinking about these aliens, but then boiling them down to abilities, technologies, weaknesses, super ships, and so forth. But the background thoughts all there, it just leads ultimately to a game, because that's how I do things. I hear this a lot. People seem to think that because I create games and spend thousands of hours thinking up fictional situations and characters, I should put this into a book. I suspect that for many, games are an inferior art form. Books are the good art. So if I can do a game, why not rise to the glorious heights of a book? Frankly, I even know some game designers who think this, who view themselves basically as failed authors and one day hope to finally get that book published. But not me. I'm fulfilled by the fictional settings and creatures I create for my games and seeing them take life in-game format. When I hear someone complain about the arrogant villainy of the black goat player stealing his gates in Cthulhu Wars or whine that they got telefragged in Quake, or they were betrayed by the arrogant villainous Zepseg alien who stole his previous tech, it's music to my ears. I'm just as happy as if someone told me how much they were amazed by the villainy of the Zavolt or whatever in a novel I wrote. Ooh, the heavens are angry with me. Also, to me, games open up horizons not seen in other media. Games are interactive. That's like the definition, right? Books and movies, not so much. I mean, I guess you interact with the author or the director a little bit, but it's not a new interaction each time. But every time you play a game, it can open up a new viewpoint, at least with a good game. I get asked about what my favorite game is all the time. Here's my answer. I really like lobster. No, that's not the answer, but bear with me. But if I ate lobster for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and snacks, you know, I'd get sick of it. i start pining for a hamburger or linguine or whatever. So really, my favorite food moves around. Lobster is one of my favorites, but I also really like Chicago-style hot dogs, cheese enchiladas, schnitzel, Chinese-style eggplant, roast duck, and so forth. My favorite on any given day might change, though of course some items don't show up in the rotation. A cunning Icelander once snuck halkot into my mouth and that was nasty. I must be hungry. That's a lot of talking about food. Moving on, in the same way as food, <coughs> excuse me, my favorite game switches around. If I've been playing one game several times in a row, I then want to play something else. For instance, I haven't played World in Flames for a few years now, so I'm due. Anyway, I don't really have a favorite board game. I just have board games I like a lot, board games I like kind of play for once in a while, and board games that I don't like. And that is how I am with that.